welcome back to the channel everybody uh, I finally made it back out here into the woods and uh, today I wanted to talk to you all about some lessons learned from this summer I uh, am wrapping up a camp from tonight or from this morning I, I should say I spent the night out here just testing out the old bedroll and I was genuinely curious as to how well it would do there will be a video coming on the bedroll itself but today's topic is not about the bedroll it's about the haversack and um, more or less the content so in July I did a video about what I was carrying and uh, I'd been carrying that particular equipment for probably about eight months but only had the Blackbird haversack since mm, like like early March like very early March and I wanted to talk to you all about what I learned this year in terms of carrying and now that I have the nice equipment and everything where I'm heading for the future what I have learned okay uh, I used to always carry my water in a two quart canteen and it was a separate bag that if I lost this or if this failed I could take the contents of that put it inside of that other bag or use that other bag for whatever I wanted to use it around camp on down the line and I, I've decided that that's a little too bulky for me um, I do miss the time in which I had my old haversack and everything was a lot more condensed. So I went ahead and put the water bottle inside of here. I've also changed water bottles, so we're going to get into that. All right. I'm keeping my cup around because it's simply my security blanket. And obviously my gloves need to be here. Uh, but moving up here, I have, if you guys have been paying attention to my last probably five videos, and a few of the ones that I've taken down, I went away from this jute twine here and went into the bank line. Now I do believe bank line has a place, but I particularly care more for the jute twine because it's a lot easier to replace. And I can get that from any hardware store as opposed to having to go online to get good uh, tarred bank line. So I'm gonna keep this around with a couple hanks of bank line here and there. Uh, and I do think bank line is awesome. I just think this is more obtainable and retainable. And it's also easier to uh, burn. So when I'm done building a pot hanger or whatever, I go ahead and burn that. So I'm, I've, I've transferred back, if you will. I've went back in time towards my jute twine I used to carry. Uh, this year, I've also decided to upgrade my emergency shelter slash poncho. And I went with one wind. Uh, for those of you who've known me in the past four, uh, the 14 and a half years I've used a USGI poncho or one of those uh, military Zelt bonds from the German and Italian armies when it was colder. All that to be said, I went ahead and went to one wind. You'll be seeing some more videos on me testing this. I've done tons of tests off camera and I've decided to take you along with me on that test because this does very, very well. And I think that it is a piece of gear that I'm willing to put my namesake on and say that it works. So now that I've kind of done that for the past six months, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and talk about it on the channel as opposed to just that one 10 minute test. Um, obviously this year I have made a massive upgrade to my fire kit. And uh, as you can see here, I've already done a video on it, but this is my fire kit. And I've also moved my med kit into my fire kit as well. So this is all nice and waterproof. My med kit is no longer uh, as extensive. And uh, I'm completely okay with that. So I went ahead and dropped down to that, okay? Moving forward, I went ahead and got a clean canteen, 40-ounce canteen with the... Uh, Ozark Trail, I think this is an 18 ounce cup. Yeah, the 18 ounce is the only cup I have found that uh, so far that nests onto here. And the reason why I went to this stainless steel nesting cup as opposed to my normal um, flat pan, if you will, is because I wanted something that I could cook stews and stuff in. Uh, you know, make pretty much make uh, stews all the time if I got some kind of fish or something I would you know go ahead and put that over the fire or a squirrel or a quail or on down the line and I can still cook the same way I normally do but it nests right here and I've kind of gone backwards in this I, this is how I used to carry my water before I started YouTubing and uh, I found that this was the better way so I went out and bought a bigger clean canteen I had a smaller one and no nesting cup 
the nesting cup idea is new to me. I, I've always thought that was kind of stupid, but um, it's time to move forward, if you will. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I do have 40 ounces of water in my stainless steel canteen, which is a lot safer to drink out of than that piece of plastic, which somebody did point out to me. Uh, moving forward, I've also taken my uh, water filtration system and put that at the bottom of my bag so it's right below my canteen, which means it's always easy to get to. Because if I'm going to be refilling my canteen, obviously it's going to be out of the bag, which means I'll be able to get to this. So it fits in there snug enough to do so. Um, I've also started using the uh, Quick Deploy Ridgeline. I previously would just throw some of that jute twine up in each direction and make my tarp hang however I wanted it to, and then burn the jute twine when I was on my way out the door. But a dedicated uh, quick deploy ridge line with these soft shackles and the 30 foot, uh, this is a, it's like a high visibility pieces on there so you can actually see this at night if I decide to use a tarp. I can uh, do that. I can also use this in conjunction with my one win poncho I have no problem with it being this big because this is my go-to ridge line all the time now um, so I have that down in there and uh, I previously talked about those tent stakes those are still in there and uh, this is a year this is a year one kind of thing for me so I want to bring that up I've also taken my old handkerchief that I carry on my body and I've dedicated a handkerchief to my pouch or to my haversack and it is blaze orange for signaling I did have a camp chair that I was doing that with for a while, and uh, during testing I found a breaking point on purpose. I wanted to know exactly how far you could push it, and I found it. And the new chair that I purchased is brown, or that I was sent is brown. So I went ahead and made this my uh, signaling device, and it's obviously still a uh, bandana. So common sense would state that it still can do the things of a bandana. Uh, moving to the top up here, I haven't changed too much. But this is what I'm going to be sticking with. Um, I changed Mio out into, uh, I've changed to Mio, excuse me, because it has better electrolytes and uh, you can get a lot more flavors. It's also more dense than that tea was that I was carrying. So I get more squirts than I do with a uh, tea or a lemonade, which I'll still carry those when I feel like it. But this is more or less for the summertime. Uh, and early fall because here in early fall it's still 85 degrees out so you still need to hydrate very very well um, this year I've also decided to start carrying this here this is a first year product for me it is a husky tool sharpener and it's designed to sharpen like like uh, lawn tools at your house like lopping shears and pruners so I can still do that I can use this to sharpen my axe or my machete in the field or whatever and it's also an amazing striker. So the striker that comes with my uh, preferred uh, ferrocerium rod is kind of crap. And so I kind of use it as a uh, pine pitch maker slash, uh, you know, I'll still make shavings with this, but it's not good enough to actually throw a spark. So the Colligans is actually not a bad ferrocerium rod. And this is probably the 13th different type I've tried. It's one of the cheaper ones, but it still works very well. And it's holding up very well. So I go ahead and uh, I went ahead and purchased this as a multifaceted device. Eventually, I'm going to drill a hole in this and put it on my lanyard. I haven't gotten to that point yet. Uh, truth be told, this ExoTac is kind of getting on my nerves. By the way, it's another thing that I've decided to do this year to kind of keep two different types of fire right here on it within itself and the convenience of just being able to grab this. Uh, the ExoTac for me has been, the lid's been popping off in the bag. And that means that if I'm going on long treks and I do manage to get wet via rain or maybe I fall into a puddle or a trip or something, however I end up getting wet, this thing's not doing its purpose. And uh, I have kind of figured out that I needed to push this up a little bit more. So I'll just have to be more tentative of it. It's not a, it's not a, clip and forget kind of thing you do have to be tentative of it but it is waterproof and so it's sticking around that's something I've learned this year is that I needed to for a matter of convenience not having to open that guy up and then dig around all through my crap to get to the uh ow, I'm getting stabbed sorry y'all not having to go ahead and dig through my fire kit to get to my lighter I went ahead and uh, waterproofed one up top so that's pretty nice in my opinion uh, I made some massive upgrades to this here 
and there will be more coming. So I'm not even going to talk about my fire kit or excuse me, my fishing kit. I'm going to be doing another massive upgrade to this. So talking about it right now, it'd be kind of redundant, but uh, there has been upgrades to my um, fishing kit. Uh, obviously, I always carry this and I always still carry the other parts of my fishing kit. Um, watching Junkyard Fox this year, I've decided to uh, go ahead and make the downgrade, in my opinion, to a small, one, a AAA battery style um, torch ink device. And the reason why I say this is, it's just so much easier for me to take this and uh, put it on my hat and use that as a headlamp. Whereas with a headlamp, I have to take my hat off or finagle it around. I just simply don't care for that. And uh, this is still water resistant. So I went ahead with this. Um, and I'm really happy with it because, I, like I said, it's extremely small. It's used when I need it and not necessarily like I used to do a lot of canoeing. So I'd always have my coast light and I still have it. When I go canoeing, I put that in the bag. But this right here for 90% of my adventures uh, short of fossils and uh, canoeing, it does it for me, and this is better than what I had. Runs off less batteries, can be turned into a headlamp, and it's just not in the way. So I carry that now. It's just a coast light. They're like 14 bucks. And the uh, last thing that I went back to, uh, as a child, I believed in Altoids cans religiously, to the point where I made an Altoids can that I could go out to the woods with for a few days in the area that I frequent and with the knowledge that I had. Those two big key factors paired with good weather, I went out into the woods a lot with just an Altoids can to prove points. Now, all that to be said, as an adult with a real brain and not somebody that's trying to prove a point, Altoids cans for me serve very good purposes like fire kits, like fishing kits, like admin kits, which we're going to get into right now. This is kind of my admin kit here. I have my whistle in here. I have an extra battery, some salt and pepper. If I get lucky multiple times, I have salt and pepper for some fish. I keep my uh, storm-proof matches in here simply because uh, if I get into this kit uh, and I need a match, I don't want to have to go through my bag. I want to be able to just pop this open, stuff a match into a tinder bundle, and be done. Now I also carry some uh, wax in here. What I use that for normally is the ends of these will fray when you cut it. And so I use this wax. I heat this up and just kind of run it across there. And it stops this from, from unraveling. Instead of having to sit there and whip or tie a knot, I just use this stuff here. And in the long run, if you ever need to turn this into a good tinder bundle, you can also put some wax on it and it'll make it burn longer. I also have a cut down uh, carpenter's pencil in here and a buttload of duct tape as well as some blanket pins and a couple of bandages. Um, those bandages are, are quite big, they're like the two by two bandages in case I really hurt myself and obviously the duct tape can be used to deal with that. There's also some band-aids in there which I also have band-aids in here. But this is um, a really important kit to me. I do like to make uh, turpentine or excuse me pine pitch. In the woods and I make that in here. You can also make char cloth. Um, char cloth does have a place even without a fair without a flint striker without excuse me a flint and steel in my opinion. They work great with ferro serum rods as well and uh, I like to make that kind of stuff in here. Now this is a newer one. I burnt the past couple ones out which is why this still looks decently unused but uh, as time goes it will obviously be burnt down to a crisp. So y'all, that's what I'm carrying this year, and I also do not plan on getting rid of the, the Blackbird Haversack. Blackbird 2 has been my best Haversack I've ever owned. This is going to be with me for years to come. I will still purchase other Haversacks to try them out for you guys and to kind of compare them to the Blackbird so you see what the differences are. And uh, But at the end of the day, this has become my absolute manhandle. This thing has manhandled my five-day adventures I don't take you on, the canoe trips, the... The, the incessant amount of scouting I do in the woods, the overnighters I just decided to do at the last minute, and all of the fossil hunting, which is the hardest thing on this bag because it ends up getting drenched. I end up going across about this deep to get to my fossil hunting spot. So 
For those of you wondering in the comment section why I'm always falling into a creek or something, it's because I fossil hunt and happen to be in the area to fall into a creek because I'm right by it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, I learned a lot from both you subscribers and uh, Blackie Thomas as well as a lot of bushcraft channels out there. I wanted to thank all of you in the comments for teaching me not only about uh, what you need to learn but what I need to learn and things that I need to work on. Um, there's been some comments about me being too much like Blackie Thomas and uh, I personally don't see that. And I don't want you to take this as an offense when I'm saying this to you. Uh, this is just how I am. Uh, I strive to learn and he strives to teach. If he's willing to teach and I find something I like from him, I'm obviously going to do it. Um, this is not a lot. I can go two or three days out of this. with, And if I pair it with a bedroll and some good, a good place to hunt and fish, it's game over. Uh, I'm good for a while. Um, all that to be said, I wanted to state that I am pretty authentic. Failing, first attempt at learning, um, you know, I have been put in some nasty spots plenty of times. And that's a part of why I'm bringing it up in this video because this was twice this big when I was a kid. I had twice as much equipment when I was a kid. And uh, I've, I've narrowed it down multiple days in the woods with what, I've, with what you see right here. And uh, half that's water, fire, and shelter with all due respect <laughs> and uh, I mean a little fishing kit some fire and some salt and pepper beyond that is about what you're looking at that's not a lot and uh, it fits comfortably in that haversack no problem I have space to put food in there um, I already ate my food for this camp out so obviously I don't have it but I just wanted to t tell you all that I've learned a lot from all of you about myself, about what I need to learn, what I do need to teach you all, and um, what you all know and love. And I really appreciate that. You've all helped me grow a lot this year. Um, I start my summers off, or excuse me, I start my camping year in the winter, and I go from winter to winter as a fiscal year for me. So this, to me, is my end of year video, where I talk to all of you about what you've shown me and what you've all taught me and what I've grown on personally and where I am. And I also talk to the fans, well I shouldn't say fans, the, the subscribers individually about their comments uh, because they help me grow. I don't want anybody who may feel singled out by what I just said previously. Uh, I want you to understand that this is my response to you. And uh, if you need more evidence, then continue to watch the channel. Um, this year I didn't take you on many trips because I needed to get out and relieve some stress. I had a really rough year and the woods is my medicine. Um, I'm not going to go into my personal life on YouTube. It is nothing that, there's no value in that. And so I'm going to leave it at that. If we ever meet at a campfire, I'll go a little more in depth. But until we meet in person, uh, you'll just have to be left in wonderment like everybody else. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something from this and kind of saw where my kit's going. And I uh, hope to see you here in the winter months when we do our videos about camping. Um, most of my camping is in the winter. I only did this camp out to kind of test out this bedroll and see if it's going to be work working for me. Um, I'm also going to be using this as a prototype for my personal bedroll that I want to create. So I hope to see you all in those videos giving me honest feedback from experience or desire that will be usable. So stay tuned for that. I will be making my own bedroll and I will be planning to have it manufactured by OPSG Products, the maker of this haversack here in the United States. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's a long form. It's a lot of talking and uh, I hope that you guys see me in the next one where we talk about this bedroll here and why. Stay tuned for more.